This is a little tutorial exercise on the relationship between the longitudinal displacement profile and the ground reaction curve for um, tunneling problems that, uh, that really help you to gain some insight to, to aid in your design. Uh, it's really the combination of these two curves that that really can can help you out to understand uh, what's going on with the three-dimensional tunneling advance and uh, some of the loads or displacements that your tunnel might uh, experience. <clears throat> so in, in the lectures, we talked about this theoretically, but I think it actually, in particular, this concept really comes together well uh, when you have some numbers to deal with. So the problem is you're planning to develop a tunnel uh, with an approximate circular cross-section, and it has a diameter of four meters. Develop a suitable longitudinal displacement profile and a ground reaction curve for the tunnel using either an analytical solution or numerical modeling, and the pertinent parameters using the Moore Coulomb uh, criterion are, are listed here. Uh, we have Young's modulus, a uh, Poisson ratio, cohesion friction, and psi is the dilation angle. Okay, and we also have a isotropic in situ stress field, uh, S naught of 30 MPa. So we have to develop these uh, two curves. And from that, we have to determine how much displacement is predicted to occur at a distance two meters behind the tunnel face. And B, determine what value of internal pressure, PI, uh, exists in the tunnel walls at a distance two meters behind the tunnel. I always say in class, the first step is to sketch the problem. So we have a very simple situation. Uh, we're talking about a circular tunnel, okay? Uh, the tunnel has a diameter um, four meters um, or a radius. of two meters. Uh, <clears throat> it has an isotropic stress field. Okay. Where S naught is the stress in all directions is the same. It's 30 MPa. Okay. Um, we are going to use the uh, more Coulomb criterion. Right? With a C and a Phi. Okay. And we have the parameters. Uh, well, first off, we have a stiffness parameters of 5 GPA. And we have a Poisson's ratio of 0.2. Okay, so those are our stiffness parameters. And the more Coulomb parameters of uh, C is 3.5. Okay, phi is uh, 30 degrees and psi, the dilation angle, is 15 degrees. Okay, so where do we start? Well, the first thing is to determine the radius um, of the plastic zone and the maximum displacement. All right, 
So how are we going to determine those? Well, as it said, uh, we can use a numerical model, right? Two-dimensional numerical model, or we can use some closed form solution, analytical solution. The Kirsch solution does not apply because that's elasticity, but we have an elastoplastic case, right? So in this case, I'm going to use the Duncan Fama. I'm not going to go through the Duncan Fama method in, uh, in, in this tutorial. We're going to talk about the results and dealing with it and focus on the LDP and GRC. You can see other examples of how I used analytical solutions to solve these uh, things, but let's, let's get down to the results. All right, so from the Duncan Fama solution, um, we got... We got a U max, max of 43.4 millimeters, and millimeters are good units to talk about um, tunnel displacements, and a radius of the plastic zone of 3.45, and the radius of the tunnel is 2. Um, so, you know, it's helpful to normalize some of these things. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, the U max over the uh, tunnel. Uh, radius gives us the tunnel strain. So that's also a helpful thing to understand. So our tunnel strain is uh, 43.4 millimeters um, divided by 2,000 millimeters. Okay, and that's given us 2.1, well, 2.2%. tunnel strain. And the radius of the plastic zone is also nice to understand relative to the radius of the tunnel. So the radius of the plastic zone over the radius of the tunnel um, gives us 3.45 meters over uh, 2 meters. That gives us a ratio of 1.7. Alright, so with this information, we can determine the LDP that we're going to use. Alright, so from Vlachopoulos and from and Diedrichs, uh, they have a great equation for uh, longitudinal displacement profiles. And this is a simplified version I have with, I made with quite a few uh, less parameters. And this gives us a relationship between the distance from the tunnel, uh, normalized to the diameter, um, and the uh, displacement of the tunnel boundary divided by the maximum displacement, okay? And we have a ratio RP over RT uh, of 1.7. And you can see here I have a curve for 1, 1 1.5, and 2. And so 1.7 would be, you know, just in between there, right? Kind of hard to, hard to draw that perfectly, but you get the sense. Okay. 1.7. So that's the curve that we are going to make use of. Now, 
the ground reaction curve. So the ground reaction curve, well, that is essentially a plot of the internal pressure versus the boundary displacement, okay? And you can get that from numerical models or analytical solutions that consider PI. So uh, again, I use the Duncan Fama. And I'm not going to show you the solution here, but I'm just going to show you the results in this table here. So, what did I get? So again, uh, S naught is 30, so I started with that. Uh, and then I reduced it down to 20, down to 10, 5, 2.5, and 0, so no internal pressure. And you'll notice I, I reduced it in increments that is nonlinear, and they're closer together uh, when I get to lower stresses. And that's PI and MPA, right? And displacement in millimeters. So the equation gave me 0, 5, uh, 9.9, 16.9, 25.3, and we already know the value at zero because it's the maximum value of uh, 43.4. Okay, so that is also U max. All right, so now we want to make a ground reaction curve with that. We're going to plot that up. Okay, this might be a bit crude, but I'm going to do my best. Bear with me. And we're going to go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 millimeters. Uh, and then we're going to go 10, 20, 30 MPA. Okay, so at uh, 30, we have zero. Okay. And then at PI of zero, we have 43.4. So 
there's our two extreme points. And then we'll go down to 20 and we have five, okay. Again, I'm just eyeballing this. You will wanna do this with more precision using a software or Excel. And 10, we want 9.9. .9. Okay, at five, we're up to 16, almost 17. Two and a half, we're at 25.3. Okay. And there we have a ground reaction curve. And like I say, you will want to do this with Excel and you'll want to have way more points and maybe make it continuous. But for the purposes of this uh, demonstration, uh, this, is, this is fine. <clears throat> so A is how much displacement two meters behind the tunnel face, okay? So two meters behind the tunnel face, right? Say you're gonna put some rock bolts in there or maybe a measurement in instrumentation or something like that, okay? Um, and how much displacement occurred at that point? Well, first we wanna to go to our uh, longitudinal displacement profile. And we want to see what the ratio of UR to U max is at two, uh, at two meters behind the tunnel face. So we have X over T over X over D, right? And so we want to have X over D is two meters divided by four meters is 0 0.5. And so from there, we want to go to longitudinal displacement profile, right? And so we go to the longitudinal displacement profile. Uh, X over D is uh, 0.5 right here, okay? Uh, and we want to intersect this curve here. I am going to use more precision in this case. We want to intersect this uh, 1.7 curve, okay, and that gives us 0.49 and we know that U max is uh, 43.4 millimeters so that gives us uh, displacement of 0.49 times 43.4 millimeters Twenty one point three millimeters at a distance of two meters behind the tunnel face. Part B asks us, uh, what's the internal pressure at two meters behind the tunnel face?
Okay, well, uh, we use a longitudinal displacement profile to understand the displacement at that distance, and the ground reaction curve gives us the relationship between displacement and PI. All right, so at that, uh, you, so going to the ground reaction curve um, with the displacement of 21.3 millimeters, okay, that is going to give us a value of PI. So 21.3 millimeters, it's about here, okay. And again, this is very crude, but it's just for demonstration purposes. You can do a lot better and uh, you are expected to do better. Uh, with your assignments. Okay. And your PI value there is about 4 MPA. All right, so PI is about 4 MPA at X equals 2 meters. Okay. So that can give you, like I say, some insight into a few things related to ground support. Um, if you put some ground support in there, you could have some sense that, you know, it's going to probably have to withstand at least 4 MPA of pressure. Um, and if you assume that uh, it, it didn't have any effect on really slowing the displacement down much, then you would expect that it would have to withstand uh, the remainder of this disp displacement because it was installed at this point, okay, um, and it would be going along for the ride for the remainder of the displacement. So I hope that those numbers help you to get a better sense uh, of how the LDP and the GRC uh, interact and work together in tile design.